Hey guys, and welcome back to The Painted Teacher. Today, we're gonna learn about an artist named Paul Suzanne. And so I wanna show you a piece of his artwork, okay? Here is some artwork of his. These are called still lifes. So today, we're going to do our own version of a still life, and we're going to be doing some apples. I thought it's fall time, what a perfect time to be painting some apples, right? So a still life is anything that's predict or um, depicting uh, something that's not moving. It's still, okay? So that's a still life. So we're going to take our own version of Paul's work today, and we're going to be creating our still life, okay? So let's get started. First things first, you're going to need these supplies. So you're going to need two sheets of white paper. Now if you're painting, I suggest using a thicker paper. Um, if you're watercoloring, use a good watercolor paper. And if you're just coloring, a good construction paper is fine. I'm actually going to be painting using acrylic paints and I'm just using construction paper, so that's fine. So you'll need two pieces of white construction paper or whatever paper you're using. You're also going to need one piece of colored paper of your choice. We're going to have some fun with this. This is going to be our pop of color and it's going to be our bowl that our apples are going to sit in, okay? So this can be a fun color of your choice, all right? You're also going to need a glue stick to paste down our artwork and then whatever um, you are coloring with. Again, I'm using acrylic paint, so I've got my paints out on my plate. I've got my brushes ready. You can use um, any material you would like. You can use crayons. You can use markers. You can be using um, oil pastels. That would be beautiful. So any material that you want to use is fine. Today, I'm going to be using paints, okay? So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our background. Here is our final piece. This is what you guys are gonna be creating today. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our background. Now this is our background here, okay? So that's what we're going to create first. So you're going to need to grab your white piece of paper. Okay, when you've grabbed your white piece of paper, we're gonna create our background using pattern and line, which are two things that we're going to learn about in art with me, is our elements of art and our principles of art. So line is an element of art that we're going to talk about today, and pattern is a principle of art that we're going to talk about today, okay? So let's talk about those things. So to create our um, our background, we're going to be using line, okay? And line, just as it said, is a path made by any point moving in the space, okay? So see these fun lines here? And my background has some fun lines too. So add some fun lines in your background. The other thing we're going to look at is pattern. Pattern is our principle of, one of our principles of art, and pattern is repeated elements in an artwork. So you can see on my paper here, pattern, this repeated pattern is circles, and to Today, I'm going to have a repeated pattern of circles too. So I've created my background with line, here's my wavy line, and pattern. I've got my repeated circles. You guys can create your backgrounds now, and if you need to, you can pause the video here to create your background. Remember, have fun and use that line and pattern. All right, so when you are done with your pattern, it is time to color that. So again, you can use any material that you like. I'm gonna be using paint. And so I've already gotten started with my painted background. I've got some fun contrasting colors here. I've got my purple and my yellow with some orange polka dots. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this bottom here by painting that, okay? So I'm gonna repeat my pattern in my line and I'm just gonna finish my painting. So you guys can finish too. Making patterns and um, fun different designs is one of my favorite things because that is where your artwork is going to be unique to you. So you might choose to do large circles as your background or maybe you want to do spirals. This is where everyone, everyone's artwork is going to look a little bit different and everybody starts to look unique and that is what I love about art. So don't try to copy your neighbor and see what they're doing. See what you can come up on your own because that is when it becomes your artwork. So I've got my yellow painted now. Now I'm going to switch 
to my purple and finish out my purple. I've got one little line here of purple that I'm gonna finish. Now again, it's super fun to use the paint. I love to paint when I can, but if you're not painting, that's okay. You can use any colors, um, any type of material or medium for your backgrounds. Oil pastels would be beautiful with this as well. They're gonna allow you to be able to really blend your colors, especially on your apples. That would be beautiful with some oil pastels. My last little touch that I'm going to add are my orange polka dots there on my yellow because that is my pattern for my background. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my orange little circles. And if you are in a classroom setting, this would be a great project to maybe do two days, um, two days worth of work. So maybe you want to do all of your painting one day and then pasting down and completing it the next day. But if you're doing it all at one time, I suggest using thin layers of paint. If you are painting, okay, use thin layers because by the time we're done with our apples, this is going to be nice and dry. Okay, so remember to use those thin layers of paint. Now, when you're done with your background, you can set this to the side to dry because we're going to be moving on, okay? Our next step is we are going to be using our fun color. So whatever color you chose, I chose blue. Got, again, just those contrasting colors going on. This is where we're going to make our bowl to put our apples in, okay? So you're going to draw a large oval and cut that out. Now, I'm not going to draw my oval. I'm just going to go with it and cut it out, and you can do that too. So we're just going to cut out a large oval for our bowl. And your bowl can be um, fat, it can be long and skinny, it can be more round, it doesn't have to be an oval. Again, you can choose your own shape there. So there we go, just an oval, that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna let our background dry before we paste him down, okay? So probably by the time we move on to our apples, this will be, our background will be nice and dry and we can paste him on, okay? So we'll just sit him to the side. This is gonna be our bowl. Something that I will suggest when I was doing my sample earlier is I made my oval a little too large. I couldn't see my pattern very good. So if you want to, this is a great time to maybe t hold up your, um, bowl to your pattern and see if you like that. See, I think I'm I'm covering up a lot of my fun patterns, so I might make him a little smaller. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make him just a tad smaller. And again, this is where art becomes a little fun because you're just kind of going with it as you make it, right? I found that some of my best projects are just when I go with it and do what looks great and what I think is right. Smaller bowl. Yeah, now I can see some of that pattern. I like that. I might even move it up or down on my page, but we'll worry about that when we paste them down. So we'll put this back to dry. We'll put our bowl to the side. And our next step is we need to do our apples. So first thing we need is our other sheet of plain white paper. So we've used one for our background and we need our other one for our apples. So what you're gonna do when you get your white paper is you're going to draw three circles. Now, here's where you can be creative again. If you want more than three apples in your bowl, by all means, draw as many circles as you want, okay? In today's video, I'm gonna do three apples. So I've drawn my three circles. They can be any size that you want. And now when we're done drawing our circles, we're going to paint them or again, whatever you're choosing to do, we're gonna color them in, okay? So again, I've already gotten started and I've painted one of my apples. Something that I wanna show you in my apple is I've got a, a gradient of colors here. I've started with a dark and I've gone to lighter. And so have some fun when you paint your apples. In my bowl, I have a green, a red, and a yellow apple. Think about all the different colors of apples that you see. And remember, when God created the apple, did he make it just one solid color? 
no, there's lots of colors in that apple. If you really take a good look at an apple, maybe you want to set up your own still life with a basket of apples to look at in your classroom or at home. That would be a good way to observe the apples. And you can see all of the many colors. So I'm going to go ahead and try a red and a yellow one. And I'm going to be mixing some colors to get some fun apples with lots of different colors in them, okay? So go ahead and you can pause the video here to paint your apples if needed, okay? So I'm going to start with my yellow here and paint him up. And I want some of my apple to look like there's a shadow at the bottom. To create the shadow, I'm going to put a little bit of black, just a tiny bit of black on my paint. And I am going to just mix him in at the bottom. See how I did that? Just painting in the black there. But to get that not so stark black, because you can clearly see that that is bright yellow and black, right? To blend it like I've done here, I'm going to grab a lot of yellow on my brush and mix that in and bring it up through my yellow. And you can already tell how it's helping to blend that in. And so it's not so um, dark to light there. We've got a little bit of movement in there. See how that shades nicely? And I may want, even want to add a little bit more black down there, just a little bit more shadow. We're gonna make it look like our bowl of fruit is sitting in a light or sitting by the window. So if you've ever sat by the window, sometimes you notice that there's a shadow on the other side. That's all we're doing with our apples. So I'm done with my yellow one. I like the way he looks. I'm gonna move to my red one. So I'm gonna get another brush and paint. Let's see, I'm gonna get the brush. And I'm going to paint my last apple red. And you can have a basket all of green apples or all of um, red apples if you want. This again is just having fun with your bowl of fruit. Get creative, be different. Don't be afraid to be different. That's why I love art. If all art was the same, it would be boring to look at, wouldn't it? So get, have fun with that. All right, I am all done with my apples now. So we're gonna go ahead and put this to the side for now, okay? Because we wanna let this dry just a little bit. Remember what I said about if we're painting, use thin layers of paint, okay? So that it won't take so long to dry. So I'm gonna give it just a minute, and already my yellow one is almost dry. So I'm gonna give it just a little bit, and we're gonna move back to our bowl and our background. So my background is now nice and dry. It's nice and dry, nothing's on my fingers. We're gonna take our bowl that we cut out earlier and we're gonna go ahead and paste it to our background now, okay? So you'll use your glue stick or whatever you're using to apply your bowl. And I always put the glue right on the object that I am gluing down. I never put it on this part because I don't know how big it's gonna be. So put your glue on the part that you're sticking down, okay? So now I'm going to stick my bowl onto my background, just like that. And I put mine lower to the page because I like this little hump here and I wanted you to be able to see it. So you can place yours anywhere on the page that you want. Maybe you want it at the top or maybe you want it in the center. You can, again, play with this wherever you'd like it, okay? All right, let's put him down for now. We're almost done with our bowl. We're going to go back to our apples now. If yours aren't dry yet, you might want to wait, okay, before you cut them out because we want them nice and dry before we cut them out. Mine are pretty much dry. I use thin layers of paint, so I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out my apples. These look so yummy, yummy enough to eat. One of my students today brought me some apples from an apple orchard that they went to over the weekend, and I cannot wait to dive into those apples. I'm trying to remember, I know that there was a green one, I know that there was a red one, I don't remember if there was a yellow one, but that's okay. I'm going to have a beautiful yellow one in my basket here. All right, I've got my apples all cut out. Okay, and now the fun part. We're gonna make these look like apples. So what we're gonna do here is I'm going to use, I'm gonna use a red Sharpie. Just actually, you know what, I'm gonna use, 
let's use a darker Sharpie. I wanna show you how we're gonna do this. So you can use paint here if you want. You can use a black crayon. I'm just gonna use a Sharpie to make sure that you can see it, okay? So I'm gonna think about how I want my apples in my basket. Now I told you that I'm gonna have a light source. We wanna think of it as the sun is shining down on the basket. So think about where you want your sun to shine down on your basket, because that's gonna matter. Because remember we talked about our shadowing. We want our darker sections of our apple to be towards the bottom if our light is coming from the top. Now if your light's coming from here, then we might would rotate our apples, right? Because that's where our shadow is gonna be. I'm gonna have my light source coming from the top. So I'm going to have all of my shadows at the bottom. Okay, so our tops of our apples are going to be right here. So what we're going to do to make this look like a stem is I'm going to make a shape of a U, just like that, and we're going to have a little peak coming out. That's our little stem. Now if you want to get real fancy with your stem, you can make it a little wider at the top and make a little triangle and color him in. Just like that. And that's going to make it look like a little apple. So go ahead and do that to all three of yours. Again, remember to find that light source. Where do you want your light to come from? Make the U. Go up and make a line. And if you want to make him fancy, put your triangle in there and color him in. All right, so I have all three of my apples now. They're all nice and dry. I have my beautiful background and my bowl, and I'm ready to place my fruit in the bowl. So go ahead, figure out how you want yours assorted in your bowl. Maybe you really love your green one like I do. Green's my favorite color, and I want him on top. Or maybe yellow is your favorite color, and you want the yellow one on top. This is however you want to arrange your fruit in your bowl. Go ahead and paste all three down onto your bowl. Again, using that glue stick, remember what we said, we're going to put the glue on the back of the object because we don't know how big it's going to be or where it's going to go in our bowl. So go ahead and glue him down. Ooh, I love the red apple on my background. Such a great contrasting color. These colors remind me of fall. I am so ready for fall. It's been so hot. All right. When you are done and your fruit is in your basket, we're almost done. So our famous artist, right, the one we talked about at the beginning, Mr. Paul, would not have been famous for his artwork if he wouldn't have put his name. Can you think about that? Someone just did this and left it laying. What if you were famous one day? So you need to put your name on your artwork, okay? So whether that's on the back or down in the front, whatever you want to put it, wherever you want to put it, go ahead and write your name on your artwork, okay? And you may even want to put your age just in case you're famous one day. How old were you when you did it? Okay, when you've done your name, you're all done. And I hope you love your still life as much as I love mine. Well, guys, that's all that I have for you today. I hope that you learned a little bit more about Paul and his still life. I hope that you learned about pattern, right? One of our principles of art. And line, one of our elements of art. There are seven total of elements and seven principles, and we're going to hit some of those in our painting with me, okay? But for today, that's all I have. So join me next time on The Painted Teacher. Bye, friends.